What about intelligent design? Now here I know I'm getting a little closer to the edge uh, with an audience like this where probably there are quite a few of you here, uh, perhaps uh, a lot of you, who are quite uh, attracted to this particular uh, possibility. Intelligent design is a very interesting arrival on the scene. It's, it's certainly raised a lot of interesting discussions about this concept of irreducible complexity. How is it that you could have something like the bacterial flagellum with its many different protein components where if you take one of them away, it stops functioning. Uh, so how could it be that evolution could actually generate something as complicated like that when you'd have to have 30 different proteins co-evolving and you'd gain no benefit until they'd all assembled together? That's the basic argument of irreducible complexity. And this is what uh, the uh, very thoughtful writings uh, of Johnson and Behe and Dembski and others have been about. And I think this has uh, provided a real opportunity to think about uh, these molecular machines and what might uh, be their possible explanation. But I fear that this is another proposal that is showing cracks already. Because if you look at the more recent data, now that we have lots and lots of genomes, so we can make lots and lots of predictions about these various uh, uh, protein complexes, including the bacterial flagellum, it does not appear that these emerged all of a sudden. In fact, what appears to be the case is that even a multi-protein wonder uh, like the flagellum was constructed by recruiting bit by bit proteins that had other functions. Presumably the genes for those proteins got duplicated, so the old function was maintained, but the new copy had a chance to take on a new function. And given sufficient time, which evolution offers you, I think the vast majority of biologists who have looked closely at this do not see any reason why one has to invoke a supernatural influence in order to achieve the complexity that we see in the clotting system or the eye or the bacterial flagellum. So my fear, although I've been very interested in this discussion, is that this is a God of the gaps theory, which is perhaps in record time because science is moving forward so quickly, going to be shown as such. And so if we as believers have attached our faith and tried to present our faith to others on the basis of this approach and it turns out to collapse, what have we then done? We've made God too small. We've put a God in a position of having to fix the evolutionary process that he didn't quite design right to begin with. And if that's turned out not to be the case, then what has happened here? I think we have not really put science at any risk, although many scientists are running around complaining that intelligent design is a threat to them. I don't really think that's nearly as much of a concern from my perspective is how it could be a threat to faith because I fear it's going to be wrong. The fifth option and the last, and of course you can therefore guess it's the one I'm going to put forward as the one that I think makes perfect sense out of all this. And this is the option often referred to as theistic evolution, which is simply that God designed this process he used it in a way to create creatures, including ourselves, with whom he could have fellowship. And I like this comparison of images. We humans have been searching for God and trying to depict him. Maybe all along he's been trying to show us uh, his incredible creativity. This is DNA looking down the long axis. And I have no problem uh, putting together what I know as a scientist with what I know about my faith in this particular context. So if God, who is not limited in space or time, chose to create human beings in his own image, using the mechanism of evolution, who are we to say we wouldn't have done it that way? Unless you insist upon a literal reading of Genesis 1 and 2, this seems to me an entirely compatible description of what has happened. Now, some people are worried, well, evolution seems so random. Well, to us, because we're trapped in this linear axis of time, but if God is outside of space and time, in the very moment of that flash that we call the Big Bang, he could also have the whole process worked out, including our having this conversation tonight. And it would not be random at all to him. For me, this provides an enormous sense of comfort, a harmony that I can't find in other ways, a way that draws me in the direction of worshiping an almighty God who has more creative power and majesty than I had ever imagined would be the case before these kinds of observations came along. I don't expect that this necessarily grabs onto everybody, but it does seem to me that this is a credible, intellectually defensible, and enormously comforting synthesis.